Muley are like gnocchi's cheesy, pillowy cousins. It's essentially the inside filling of a ravioli without all the fuss of making pasta. It's by far one of my favorite things to eat. So let me show you how to make it. To a large bowl, add 600 grams of your strained whole milk ricotta cheese. If your ricotta cheese has a lot of moisture in it, you want to be sure to strain it. You don't want this mixture to be too wet or it will take ages to dry and you won't be able to cook with them straight away. To the ricotta, add 100 grams of finely grated Pecorino Toscano cheese. The hard cheese acts as a stabilizer for the nudi, but it also brings so much flavor to the dish. Traditionally, you'd use a Pecorino Toscano, a Tuscan Pecorino for this dish. It's kind of hard to find, so if you can't find it, just use a regular Pecorino Romano or Parmigiano Reggiano, or a combination of the two. Add in about a quarter teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. Start mixing this all together, but we want to taste it before adding the egg to adjust the seasoning. It needs a little bit of salt. My ricotta was not salted, so I'm adding in about a tablespoon of salt just to balance it out. Make sure to taste as you're going and adjust the seasonings as necessary. Once the taste is perfect, add in one egg to your mix. Mix that really well until the egg is completely combined into the cheese mixture. Your mix should be quite thick. We need to roll these into balls, so you want to make sure that they hold their shape. If it's too wet, they'll fall apart. Prepare a baking sheet that's going to fit in your fridge. Generously dust your baking tray with semolina flour. If you're ever cooking from an Italian recipe and you see the letters QB, that means quanto basta, however much is enough. And that's how much semolina flour we're using in this recipe. I like to use my tablespoon cookie scoop to form my balls, but you could just as easily do this with two spoons. Drop your balls of ricotta onto the semolina flour. Dust them generously over the top with more semolina and then gently toss them in that flour. Once the ball of ricotta is completely coated, take it into your hands and gently form it into a perfect sphere. Place the nudi back onto your pile of semolina, tucked away in the corner so that you can continue rolling the rest of your balls. You might have to give a few bits a little bit of a squish just to make sure that they're that perfect round shape. Once all of your nudi have been rolled out, adjust them on the tray so that they're all sitting within the semolina. You don't want any touching the bottom of the tray. You may need to add more semolina to make sure that it's completely covered. Now sprinkle the top of your nudi with even more semolina flour. Cover your tray with cling film and pop it into the fridge. You'll want to let these set in the refrigerator for at least an hour, but ideally overnight or even two nights. This creates a skin around the nudi, essentially creating a pasta from the semolina flour and the liquid that's being drawn out of the cheese. If you have the spare time, at some point during the chilling process, make sure to give your nudi a flip. This really ensures they're well coated with that semolina flour and they're not sticking to the bottom. This is especially important if you're leaving them in the fridge overnight. To cook your nudi, generously salt a pot of boiling water. I like to gently place my nudi into the pot with a spider or a slotted spoon. However you add them to the water, make sure to do it delicately so the semolina doesn't fall off. In this size pot, I do about one portion, six to seven pieces. If you want to cook more nudi at one time, I'd recommend a wider pot to allow them room to move around. If the water comes to a very vigorous boil, turn it down slightly. See how they're floating to the top? That's how you know they're ready. These are great served in a brown butter and sage sauce, but my favorite way to enjoy them is with a little bit of tomato sauce and some more pecorino romano on the top. Simple and delicious. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe because I come out with a new video every week. If you have some leftover ricotta after making this, why not try my almond ricotta cake? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.